Rose Faye Thomas founded the Anti-Cruelty Society in 1899. She was elected president of the organization, making her the first woman to head a humane society. In the beginning, the Anti-Cruelty Society focused both on animal welfare and child welfare. However, there is no record of child welfare investigation after 1916. The early members of the society were given a star medallion. If they saw an act of cruelty in progress toward an animal or a child, they were to show the star to a police officer. The police had agreed to assist members of the society in stopping acts of cruelty. In the beginning, the largest concern was the welfare of Chicago's working horses. To help the horses, the Anti-Cruelty Society began installing water troughs around the city. There are still some up around the city today, and one can be found in the lobby of the Anti-Cruelty Society, which is now used to collect donations. In 1910, the Society purchased its first permanent refuge, and in 1916, the Society opened the first charity clinic for animals in the United States. The Anti-Cruelty Society was hit hard during the Depression, as the demand for its services dramatically increased while its revenues decreased. Cruelty to animals was on the rise, as desperate people used animals to make money. Puppy mills sprang up all over the Midwest, and impromptu storefront pet shops were set up all over Chicago to sell this new cash crop. Cockfighting and dogfighting were on the rise. The mid-30s brought change to the Anti-Cruelty Society. In 1935, Dr. Wellesley A. Young of the Animal Rescue League of Boston took charge of the society, and in 1936, a bequest from Mrs. Marion McConnell enabled the construction of the Marion and Horace E. McConnell Memorial Building. The building was designed by prominent Chicago architect Leon E. Stanhope. The society's new home featured a modern clinic, surgical facilities, and a large auditorium. In 1937, Virginia Sedgwick was hired as the society's first full-time humane educator. In the first year, programs were presented in 127 schools to over 112,000 children. Relief from overcrowding in the shelter came in the form of a generous bequest from Emily Holbert, which allowed the society to build a new addition to the existing shelter. The Holbert Memorial Annex was opened in February 1954. The volunteer program was launched in 1976. Within the first year, volunteers in the Lost Pet Program reunited hundreds of pets with their owners. Volunteers in the Pet Visitation Program visited many local hospitals with small companion animals. As part of a new community outreach effort aimed at improving public perception of the society, the Anti-Cruelty Society traveling SPCA bus visited schools and community sites to deliver humane education programs. With the help of Robert R. McCormick and other funders, plans for a landmark shelter developed by noted architect Stanley Tigerman were unveiled in spring of 1979 and groundbreaking ceremonies took place in June 1979. In addition to being a state-of-the-art facility, the new shelter was designed to create a more inviting atmosphere for the public. It was hoped that the appealing design would do for shelters what removing the bars from exhibits had done for zoos. November 1981, the Society finally moved into the new shelter. It was soon apparent that although the design was appealing, many aspects of the structure were not practical for sheltering animals. Many repairs and changes needed to be made, resulting in hundreds of thousands of dollars in cost overruns. By 1982, the shelter was running on a deficit and in danger of having to close its doors. In an effort to cut costs, the Education Department and the Field Service Ambulance Service were eliminated. The shelter closed its doors for adoption two days a week. By 1984, most services were restored. The Humane Education Department was reestablished in 1985. In 1992, the Anti-Cruelty Society adopted a new logo. The panel on the left shows the logo that had been used since the 1970s and the new design. The new logo design was based on the picture on the right, Helping Hands. This was the 1920 winning entry in the School of the Art Institute poster contest. In 1995, PetSmart donated a mobile adoption van for off-site adoptions, and the Society held its first Bark in the Park event. Today, Bark in the Park is one of the Society's largest fundraiser events. In 1999, the Anti-Cruelty Society celebrated its 100th anniversary. It also broke ground on the Education and Training Center. The grand opening was in 2002. In an effort to rehabilitate and place as many treatable animals as possible, the Anti-Cruelty Society built two new treatment centers. The Bronco Rehabilitation and Treatment Center opened in 2004, and the Virginia Buttsburger Cat Clinic opened in 2008. In 2011, the Society completed its new facade, which included energy-efficient windows and facing. Additionally, the dog rehabilitation area also received an update with a new floor, new and larger kennels, and a new wall surface.